where the Torah tells us the end of the portion of Bereshis, Vayar Hashem ki Rabba Rosa Oda Boritz. Hashem had seen ki Rabba Rosa Oda Boritz. The evil of man was great, was abundant in the land. Kol Yetzer Marshus Libo Rak Rak Olayom, and the inclination of the thoughts of his heart were evil continuously, meaning totally consumed and inclined to do evil. Now, first, I want to point out, we know that Elokim is the attribute of justice. Vayar Hashem, Yudke Vavke, this is Midas HaRachman, the attribute of mercy. The attribute, Hashem within the context of attribute, attribute of mercy saw that the evil of man was abundant and his, he was inclined only to do evil. This is the attribute. Hashem, he also odom, Boritz. Again, Yudke Vavke, Hashem had regretted that he had made men on the land, and he was disappointed. I will obliterate man who was created from the face of the earth, but Noach found special favor in the eyes of God, and therefore he survived. Therefore he was the future of the world, of continuation of existence. Rabbi? One second, I just want to point out something. So in this portion, the reference the appellation for Hashem is Yudke Vavke. And next week, in this week's parsha, Noach, they are Elokim Esoritz Kihini in Ishchosa. Elokim saw the land was corrupted. And then he says, I'm pulling the plug on existence. So initially, what, during the evaluation of where have we come, he says, Hashem, continuously, the Midas Rahman left no st stone unturned to try to find favor, to justify existence should continue, even in the context that it exists. Then it says, he said, the world will be obliterated. This is the Midas Rahmim. After he left no stone unturned, but the process to come to that conclusion is Midas Rahmim. When Midas Rahmim came to the conclusion that there's no hope, he says, I will obliterate them. Now when we speak about the actual final verdict, the verdict, that's a lokim. When God gives the verdict. Meaning the process and do the due diligence to come to that point, that's Yudke Vavke. Because Hashem leaves no stone, stone unturned, that's Midas Rachmim. But in Posuk Yud Beis 12, Noach, the are lokim is ortsine nishchoso. Elokim, so that's, that's the Midas Adin. Now he's ready He's given judgment. This is the verdict. The verdict is, it's over. Yes, Ernie. Uh, just a, an observation there. You have, in Bereshis, you have all, you have Adam and, and Cain and Hevel and, and uh, Lemach, all these people, and it all dwindles down, all dwindles down to one person survives, Noah survives. At the end of all that, only one person survives, and that's Noah. So, I just, it, it's, it's really, Personally, to you, me, it's... Why was Noah so special? It says he found Chain Ben Hashem. Favor. I mean, the Gemara Not said, so much why Noah, but that all that, all that, and then what, out of all that, only one person survives. It just seems... But to tell you, it tells you why he survives. It doesn't right, say, he, it doesn't say because he was a tzaddik. No. The reason why he survived was because Noah Matzah Chain Hashem. That's why he survived. If not for that, he wouldn't have survived. So then, so then, uh, that means there were other people, tzaddikim, there were other people who were righteous, but that wasn't enough to survive. But what, what I'm trying to say is that everything dwindled down 
So in other words, everything was sort of like siphoned into just a funnel into, and it became one person survived out of all that God did in Boratius. Of all that God did in Boratius, oh, one person survived. So what does that tell us? I mean, how does that, does that mean that God creates the world so that one person who's a tzaddik will, will carry on? Or it's just, it's a, it's a hard, uh, just a thought. I, I, I don't know what to make of it. Okay. Let's say you invest a fortune in a certain to de development of a product. And then afterwards, most of your investment was, was actually wasted. But ultimately, you were able to salvage a small percentage of that investment. Noah was that infinitesimal percentage of this totality that he created. Right. But what, what what was that? Why was that the only thing he could extract from all this? Whatever it is, because he had that quality of chen. He did something which was chen. We're trying to understand what was the chen. So I, in the past, I mean, Alan, I see he's on now. I used to say, based on the Midrash, which it's explicit, because which we'll discuss a, a little bit later. God always favors the underdog. Noah was the underdog in this generation. Because when he built the Teva, he was ridiculed by his generation for 120 years. The whole idea of building the Ark for 20, 120 years, it was a project, was he should be the focal point of existence and people coming to Noah, being the world-renowned personality, ask him what's going on. So he gave, he, the whole objective was to give them Musr, to admonish them or give them direction or clarity that if they don't change, the world will be destroyed. And they made a mockery of him. And he was abused and even threatened. But despite that, he carried on. So we'll talk well, about that, what that is. I'm right, not ready so God, to say... God being perfection, God created everything. My point only is that God created everything that we just learned about in Boratius to, to uh, drill down to... No, no, everybody you know, has choice. They had choice. To Noah. To Noah. Wait that's, a second. That's what, that's, what we, that's what God did. Let me for, ask you a question. Uh, Most people... Noah Lod Mishlo Nivro. It was best for most people not to be created. That was the argument for two and a half years between Beisham and Yisrael. Right. So if that's the case, if most people fail, why create the world? The answer is it's worthwhile for the minority who do succeed. Okay. okay. But every human being has free choice. Even those who failed, they didn't have to fail. They could have succeeded. They chose because they didn't want to somehow come to the plate and do what God wanted. Therefore, they failed. But otherwise, God wouldn't have taken them. Every human being has choice. They chose to fail. That was their choice. But this is the point I want to make. What was the Moach Motzah Chem B'nei Hashem? This is what I was thinking about this morning. We find, we're going to read in next week's Parsha about Lot. Lot was the nephew of Ramavino. And initially, you don't see his true colors. But as time goes on, you see who he really was. And he was a bad guy. He was a bad person. Before Hashem says to Avram Avinu, Lech lecha mi'atzcha, mu'atzcha be'savicha. Leave your land, your birthplace, and your homeland, and your family. Leave. And we'll discuss this next week. He was told they should not be a member of his family associated with him, including Lot. Even Lot should not go with him. He has to detach himself from his family. Lot tagged along. And because Lot tagged along, there were certain serious, initially certain repercussions, and the Shechina did not communicate with Avram until Lot detached himself. It was only later, when there was the dispute between the shepherds of Avram and the shepherds of Lot, only then, because the Torah tells us, after Lot separated himself from Avram, only then did Hashem appear to Avram. Until that point, Hashem did not appear to Avram, because Lot had a certain representation. Okay, but when they separated from one another, what did Avram say to Lot? Well, brothers, if you go, you go to the right, I go to the left, or vice versa. But I'm always here for you. I will always protect you. I'm your protector. What happened? Where does he go? He goes to Sodom. Why did Lot choose to go to Sodom? It tells you exactly who, where Lot's interests lie in Sodom. Sodom is taken captives during the, the major world battle. The four kings defeat the five kings. What, what does Avram do? 
He's informed his nephew was taken captive. He goes to battle, goes to war. He's the victor. He saves Lot. What, what does Lot do after he's saved? Goes back to Sodom again. I mean, your uncle is the special person. And when he's separated from Lot, from Avram, he says, I want nothing to do with my uncle. I want nothing to do with his God. I'm an independent player. I'm an independent agent. I'm not bound to anybody. I'm not interested. Lot saves him. It goes right back to Sodom. After he saves him, what does Avram say? What does Hashem say to Avram? Altir Avram. Avram, don't be fearful. You have abundant reward. What was Avram concerned about? To defeat four kings. He needed a level of miracle, which was one of a kind. Avram was concerned that his merits were depleted. And therefore, he's actually, he's given up his share in the world to come. That was Avram's concern when he went to save Lot. So the obvious question is, if Lot is such a bad guy, through his, he's demonstrated through his behavior, when he returned from Egypt, a very wealthy man, he had no gratitude, and he spoke to Avram with a level of disrespect. His shepherds, they stole grazing land, and Avram said, it's not the way we do it. He says, you don't like it? It's just too bad. That's basically what he said to his uncle. And then afterwards, after all this, Avram puts everything on the line to save his nephew. Why? Avrami, what do you say? I asked this question last year, and after I asked Avrami the question, I didn't hear from him for three months. That's how consumed he was with this question. Because of what his brother did. Because of uh, Nachar. Uh, Haran. So Haran, 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 Haran. Let's get Haran, the Haran, dates. Haran. Right. Haran, right. So I said, so what I said was, see, Alan remembers. The first human being ever to give his life, Al Kiddush Hashem, you know who it was? That was Horam. That was Lot's father. How did, how did Lot's father die? Avram was given an ultimatum either bow to the idol or go into the kiln. Avram chose to go into the kiln. He came out alive. So Nimrod, who was the king, says to Horam, that's Lot's father, Horam, what do you choose? He says, I choose to go into the kiln. Because when Avram went into the kiln, Horam had in his mind, if my brother comes out alive, I will go into the kiln. If he does not come out alive, I will bow to the idol. Avram comes out alive, and he goes in, he doesn't come out. So why did I, why did Haran not come out of the kiln, although he went in because he didn't bow? What's the difference between Avram and Haran? Jay, what would you say the difference is? Um, a total different amount of a muna, you know, Abraham was prepared to die al Kiddush Hashem. Haran figured, okay, Abraham went out, I'll come out. Avram, when he went in, he went in not to come out. Right. right. That, that, he went in to not to come out. Haran went in, but well, he, only fine. because he's coming out. When you go in to come out, you don't come out. Therefore, Avram's going in was a different going in than, than, than Haran. But factually, why did Haran die? He was the first human being in the history of existence to give his life to sanctify Hashem's name, not to submit to paganism. You know what that means? Therefore, Avram felt, so why was Lot an orphan? Lot, the son of Haram, was orphaned because his father gave his life for Kiddush Hashem, the first human being in the history of, of the world to give his life to sanctify God's name. Avram felt he owed it to Haram. He owed it to him. Therefore, he put himself on the line even if it meant forfeiting his share in the world to come. Because that was his debt to, to his brother, and therefore he was responsible for his son. That's how I explained it in the past. Alan, is it accurate? Okay. okay. Right on, Rabbi, right on. Okay, so now, let's talk about why was Noach Motzachem in Hashem? It's not because he was only a tzaddik. He found special charm in the eyes of a God. Now, Avra, Noach for 120 years was ridiculed, persecuted, threatened. For what? That he should be the focal point that the world should do tshuva, should repent. And they made a mockery of him. And even threatened that if he goes into the teva, they will destroy the ark and they will kill him. He just kept going. Did not stop. Nothing could deter him. He failed in his mission. But in terms of what did he do? He was for 120 years in the forefront of representing God's existence. He was the only one. 
That was Noach Matzah Chaim Hashem. Just as Horon was the first human being to give his life to sanctify God's name, Noach was the only human being to other tzaddikim before, Mesushelach, whatever they were. But on the world scene, on the global scene, Noach was the first one and the only one for 120 years, sanctified God's name continuously, and therefore he was Motzah Chaim Bein Hashem. Because his life was totally dedicated for that objective and that purpose. That's the over with Noah, the new system. Motzah Chaim Bein Hashem. Because he was, as I'm saying, he represented God in this public, global level to bring about that world, Kiddush Hashem. Therefore, he was chosen to be the one, to, to be the one in the new system.